There we go! Oh, 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 oh. Fourth Master's Vlog in Gameplay! Hello everyone and welcome to Fourth Master's Vlog for the Warmer for the Thousand Gaming System, created by Games Workshop based in the UK. And welcome to my fourth game review of this vlog. Today I'm reviewing the game Aeronautica Imperialis Flight Command from 2020. I bought this game not long after release and played it through back in 2020. So here are my thoughts on this game. Gameplay. It's a turn-based game based on the specialist tabletop game that was re-released again in 2018. In the campaign you play as the humans against orcs, where you create a squad for each playthrough and you get a few randomized pilots to pick and choose from. They are all equal until you start playing with them and they receive experience. When playing, you can pick through three difficulty settings where you can decide if you want to play a long or a short campaign. After that, in each new mission you get to pick one out of two options. The options include patrol, which is regular skirmishes, ambush, which is a playstyle where you divide your pilots to attack from two sides, bombing run, where you use marauders to bomb out an orc convoy or base, escort, protecting marauders from being destroyed by the enemy, Transport, protect, direct and land Arbus lighters to drop zones to attack orc ground forces. Personally, it's a favorite of mine but it's hella difficult to play it. And lastly, intercept where you are going in to destroy enemy orc bombers. Outside of the campaign, which is I would say is more or less skirmish mode, there are also 10 scenarios where you can play certain missions, either as Imperials or Orcs, you can play as both. These scenarios I would say is the closest to an actual storyline in the game, but as the name suggests these stories are scenarios and doesn't carry over to it from each other. They can also be played in any order of shooting. No more DLC is planned as it looks at the moment, but there's been one DLC pack so far called Skull Packs. There are a few maps that are recurring scenery. There are snowy mountains, desert mountains or green valleys, all in different shapes and sizes. While playing through the missions or scenarios, you place your different aircraft in uh, what directions you want them to go, what weapons they should use, and when you press play, you will see how the orcs respond to your actions in a cinematic movement. During that time, unseen dices are rolled to decide hits and misses and saves. Your aircraft all have different abilities, speeds and range to fire. You get certain points for destroying enemies or performing mission assignments. A victory will give you points towards ending the campaign and losing will take away points. My biggest gripe with this game is the camera movement. It's so crappy and frustrating that I lost my temper more than one time. A recurring problem too is that once you've moved your pilot, it's super hard to target a certain enemy, so you'll have to target them first before moving them or else you're gonna have some troubles. There's also a versus mode, but you cannot play against random players. You have to invite friends, which made it difficult for me to try it out, as I don't know any who have or played this game. And since the game bombed in reviews, it haven't had many new players coming to the game since then. Hence why gameplay will get a 6 out of 10 forks from me. Storyline So this takes place on Rin's world during the orc invasion of the Crimson Fist's homeworld. We never see from their perspective though, as we instead follow the regular humans trying to keep the skies in human hands. There is no main character, as the campaign follows a squad that you create and the scenarios only have a few named pilots. I would technically say this is a game of skirmishes more than actual storyline, even if the scenarios is the closest you get to one type of story. If we compare it to Battlefleet Gothic Armada, then they at least used voice actors and dialogue to cover up skirmish missions. The storyline will get a 3 out of 10 forks. Graphics. I think it's, this is a difficult thing to rank, as on one hand I like the design they have, for instance the pilot's cards, and I like the art direction. But the actual game looks much more like a very good mobile game rather than a computer game. Graphics will get a 4 out of 10 forks. Music. This is another gripe as I had some bugs where the music disappeared in menus more than once, only to return once I started a mission. I fixed this in my playthrough video so it would be more pleasant to watch the videos. 
the music that we hear is it particularly spectacular or good, it's serviceable at best. The music we get a 4 out of 10 forks. Conclusion This is hard to write as I enjoyed most of my 21 hours of playing through this game, but I cannot for the sake of it recommend it to anybody. The story is negated to several scenarios where you either play as human or orcs. I believe there are 10 at the moment and I would say that's the most enjoyment I had. The campaign is more or less skirmish mode but with a squadron you level up through gameplay. You do not notice the level ups other than when they stop dying as frequently as they did in the beginning. I bought this early on and I had some problems with the music disappearing in the menus which has been fixed in the latest update. You can only play multiplayer with your friends in the current state so it limits things there. While playing, it, you will be frustrated with the camera just having a mental breakdown when you're trying to select your units, throwing you across the map. Missions that involve bombers will also be frustrating as you never know if they will drop their loads or not. In most cases, they will not for some reasons. So with all this said, I enjoyed the game, but it was frustrating in places and it misses some pieces to make a good game and I don't want to sell you on something that you might not enjoy if you don't have very low standards as me. With the premise, it could have been great, but it falls into another too early released 40k game or cash grab, trying to cash in on the fan base. My overall score for this game is 4 out of 10 forks and with that I will conclude this game review. Thank you much for watching this game review. See you around everybody. Bye bye.